So, so it's been a while. It has been a while. It's, uh, it's good. To, good to be back. Is it? Uh, well, let me be the. I'll be the judge okay, of that. Let's, well, I thought we would start um, by talking about. We have built two apps. That's basically where I'm coming from. We have built two apps in our lifetime. In y yes. Nothing yep. ever else we built than accept this. No, in this team that we have established here. Little team. Yep. We built Squoosh. Yes. We have talked about that about a million times, mm -hmm. one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. And we recently built Prox, yes. our little Minesweeper clone reimagined on the web, modern visuals, all that. Yep. And it turns out that when you build a real app, you sometimes have to make some workarounds happen about the problems yeah, yeah. that happen in the, the odd browser that doesn't quite behave. The odd browser. Yeah. Are you talking about specifically one browser? <laughs> the, all the browsers are fine, except the odd browser. <laughs> that would be a great name for a browser. Yeah, um, we'll release the browse odd browser. Browse safer with odd browser. Or maybe it's odd version numbers. It's like the Star Trek ah. films. Like the odd version numbers are the bad ones. Yeah. And even ones I mean, are it would fine. make a lot of sense with how Chrome behaves sometimes. Yeah, so, yes, so. it would. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would uh, go through our code. OK. Oh, and, and interesting. Figure so, out the, the top four stupidest hacks. That oh, so these are, these are all going to be from Prox? Prox and Squoosh. Prox and Squoosh. Yes. All right. That does sound like a terrible kids' TV show, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Prox and Squoosh. Welcome to Prox and Squoosh. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> much how I felt looking at the code samples. Excellent. So, OK. So yeah, let's, let's start with the first thing, which is about the canvas oom. Um, and um, um, you, right. you remember this, because you kind of fixed it. Right. But I'm still going to explain what it was. So in Prox, we render our game field, the grid where the tiles are. Some might be mines, or black holes in our case, yep. or not black holes. And we have animations running. And so we yes. thought to make it as fast as possible, we will be using sprites that have every frame of an animation. They look like this. Right. And oh, just, so this is yeah, OK, so this is every frame of the animation. Well, we it's we draw a rectangle over the top of it, right, for the outer bounds. Right, so we crop out one of the things that we need and put that on the tile. And so in the next frame, we just crop out the next square from this sprite sheet and put that on screen. And if that happens every frame, it looks like an animation. And right. So that means you don't actually have to have, like, this is like four or five squares that rotate independently. Yep. We could do that with a DOM. That would be a lot of DOM and a lot of layers, and it would not be fast. So in yes. this case, we're just you know copying pixels, which is really fast. Right. So we, we, for every frame, we were just taking part of that. Is this all of them? No. This is a quarter or half of the frames. A quarter or half of them. And so yes, it's every frame, 60 times a second, we were essentially like taking a different section of this sprite. Yeah, and put it on screen right. for okay, one okay. tile. And that would yes, happen yes, yes. for each tile of the game field, so that you can see if that was actual DOM, that would be too expensive. So we used sprites. Because how, how many so it, on screen at a time, we would have like 500 of these going at once. Potentially, and if not more. Doing that in the DOM? No. Just too slow. It's not what it was built for. It's really right. isn't. Yes. Um, and because we didn't know the device that you were running on, you know, the web can run anywhere. It can be a low end feature phone with like 320 by 240 pixels. It yep. can be my iMac 5K monitor. Oh, show off. Just because you've got an iMac yes, 5K I do. monitor. I do. I, I do. <laughs> I've uh, got my, it's like, I know this sounds like it's terrible complaining that I have <laughs> my poor 32 inch monitor at work, but it's only like <laughs> one DPI and you rock in with your. Like massive 4K, it's more like 5K. 4, 5, 5K screen, <laughs> yes. I'm I'm on my 1K anyway. Like I'm right. jealous. It's, but carry it, on. Yes, it's it's great. Thanks. Um, but basically, we could either like generate one sprite sheet and just have everyone download the same sprite sheet, which mm. will be rather big. And we thought that's not good. So rather, we use Canvas to generate the sprite sheet on the client side when you load the exact resolution that this device needs. Yeah. So we used Canvas 2D. To yep. draw these, yes. But we use Canvas WebGL to put them on the screen. Am right. I jumping your content? No, that's no. Good. Okay, that's exactly what's good. happening. So um, we using Canvas to be and just drawing these rectangles because that is actually what Canvas 2D is really fast at. Yeah. And we know we can figure out what the resolution is and what the pixel density is. And so what we have is basically a function. Generate sprite. Right. Yes. And so we create a canvas 2D, get the context, we scale the canvas to match the device pixel ratio because so on a sharp. 3x screen it, sh it should look, you know, on really your 5K monitor. Exactly. Okay. It. And then we just go through a loop with all the frames. Mm -hmm. uh, we move our canvas to a position where this new frame is to zero zero, and then call this draw frame function, which just draws a frame of the animation. So we have a function that draws is 
capable of drawing every frame, always right. at 0, 0. And then we have this big canvas, and we move it to draw on it. Excellent. And then now we have a canvas that contains the entire sprite sheet. And we have multiple animations, so we have multiple sprite sheets. And so this is what we did. And it worked great on all phones, except the odd browser. The odd browser. Which in this case? In this case, it was iOS Safari. It was. Which for some reason decided, you know what? You're creating too many canvases. I'm going to kill your page. It, it took us quite a while to figure out that that's what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Like all, all that we saw was a full crash. Literally saying, this page has been reloaded due to a problem, and it would do that four or five times, and I would give up. Yes. Not a great experience. Not a great experience. But eventually, we figured out that, well, so far, we have to do this. It is probably a memory pressure thing that we were, because yep. all these canvases are backed by a frame buffer, like, like or a chunk of memory that represents the pixels, and having too many of those, apparently, safaris. Like, you know what? This is over my threshold. I'm going to yeah. kill this page. If you get a, a tab in a browser, it just crashes out. Like, I would say more than 50% of the time, it's memory. Yeah. Right? You've either found a bug in the browser that has caused it to crash out. But yeah. the, the time that a browser will willfully crash out is when like you Something, run out of memory. Yeah. It's like, I need that memory back, else right. the whole system's going to, yeah. So the, the thing that we thought, how do we fix it? We, or I guess you were like, well, but I can load images that have the same dimensions as our canvas. So our sprite sheet was like, 2,000 by 2,000 pixels, I think. Yeah. We can load an image on a website like that. Why is the canvas suddenly too much? You can load loads of images like that. And so here is our great fix. Right. After having a sprite, we generate that sprite. We turn it into a blob. Yes, we do. We turn that blob into an image. Yes, we did. And we keep that image. And then we keep the image. And so we only ever have one canvas at a time. Yeah. And so Safari is now fine. And to do this, oh, it's really annoying, because we are having to encode as PNG. Yeah, just to so decode. So we can decode as PNG. <laughs> <laughs> and now, but now Which it's surely must be more memory pressure than just keeping the canvas around. Yes, but presumably, the like Safari on iOS must be smarter with images than it is with canvases. Maybe. Like, it, 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 the image it can put down onto disk rather than memory or something like that. And it, it fixed it. It now oh, works so perfectly fine. And it was purely just by finding something that we knew, like something that was similar that the browser could do. You can still write images to a canvas. It, you can write canvases or images to canvases. But like canvases that crashed, images it didn't. OK. Fine. Told you. This is going to be Carry stupid on. hacks. Yes, OK. <laughs> so next one is, is the worker murder. Because sometimes workers are allowed to die. Sometimes <laughs> they're not. And okay. it still happens. So um, yeah. we, we both squoosh. And procs have off main thread architecture going. Like yes, they do. do work off main thread. Yes. And um, we didn't run into this problem with Squoosh. And we will mm -hmm. figure out why throughout this. Oh. Um, so what we do is usually we still have a worker, and we often use comlink to yeah. make the interaction with the worker really nice. But for some reason, when we did this, our app would stop working, just not react anymore. In the odd browser. In the odd browser. In iOS Safari. Which was iOS Safari. I, we should say, like, you know, many browsers, browsers have bugs, right? Um, it just so happened that we encountered most of them on iOS yeah. Safari. Not on, not on Safari also, desktop. No, only iOS Safari. Only iOS Safari. Also, right. uh, yeah, the reason I picked these is because the solutions are so stupid. Like, right? They, yes. We have bugs yeah. in other browsers, but the solution, like, oh, they don't support blah, just do dash mapcat or something. But here we actually had to be creative and come up with very weird solutions. Yes. So basically, what we figured out is that the worker got killed. Just got killed, didn't it? Even though it still existed and had things to do, it was basically waiting for a message. And that is spec compliant to wait for a message. But iOS was like, you know what? The workers are expensive. We want that memory back. And so then we were kind of like, well, why is this? Well, we wanted to confirm our theory. Like, yeah. is this worker being killed? And so what we thought is like, well, let's like do things like we'll ping the worker so we can see those messages coming back. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So we did that, and yes. it made it better. It made it better. But it didn't quite solve it. Didn't so basically sending a message it. was like, oh, it, it seems to be around now. But then on a, a more constrained iOS device, it would still get killed. And then we're like, you know what? We're just going to send a message every three seconds because yes, we, you did. Know, and we did. And that made it even better. But we still found corner cases where well, we, we settled on this fix for a long time. Yeah. 
like this was our fix because and it was really just as we were trying to debug it like this trying to debug it made it kind of work again and we thought ah no one touch it <laughs> <laughs> this walk, is okay walk away slowly <laughs> <laughs> that's our solution fine and then f we still eventually found some corner cases where it would not work the worker would still disappear yeah and well i mean our theory was it was disappearing we could never fully confirm it no it yeah because we, the initial problem is that the simulator, the iOS simulator, is very slow and yes. is actually behaving differently from an actual device in terms of how iOS Safari behaves. Yes. And on real devices, we didn't have proper port forwarding. And so we always had to deploy, and that slowed down the entire debugging process. It was cumbersome, to say the least. It always, uh, debugging this, every time we saw the bug again, it felt like during the process of debugging it, it would start working again. And we'd yeah. be like, right, let's just. Let's move away, and then it would fall over again when we weren't looking. And then yes. we actually found something that seemed to resolve it. We still think it has resolved it, and it's so stupid that I kind of love it. Instead of pinging it every three seconds, da, 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 da. we just put it on a global. Yeah, we did. And again, this was me trying to debug it. And I thought, well, if I can put it on a global, then I can, can just debug it in the lock. console. And, and then it disappeared. And, then, and I was like, I couldn't. I, can't, I was, like, it was so angry. It's like, I can't recreate the problem. And it wasn't until, hang on, let me just remove that one line I added. Bug comes back. To be fair, we and did try to make some reduced test cases, and it never happened. So our theory is because Comlink uses proxies. Yes, proxies, that the combination of sending workers when something is done by a proxy, that there's something about their garbage collection marking algorithm that might just be a weird corner case bug, which is why the workers get collected when you use Comlink. Yeah, it thinks because it's going through a proxy, it's not carrying, it's not counting that as a reference when it Maybe, should. Maybe that's a hunch, but yeah, it could. we're only guessing. Um, Brilliant. But putting it in a global, that, that solved it. Ta-da! Um, <laughs> it looks even worse in our code because we are using TypeScript, so of course we have to ensure TypeScript. That this is actually okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. Just chill, TypeScript, chill. We know we we're know doing the bad what thing. We're doing. <laughs> yeah. Number three, I thought it was quite in, in, uh, oh, interesting. Oh yes. Is event inheritance. I know what so this one is. So in Polymer point five and one time. Everything was around uh, custom events, yes. custom event class, and putting yes. your data in there and bubbling that up. Custom events since has been kind of deprecated. It's still around. I don't think it's implemented everywhere, actually. Well, custom event is weird, isn't it? Because cu when you do new custom event, you get a an object to put on whatever you want. Yeah. Which a lot of stuff is moving away from these whatever you want objects, especially yeah. if you're using things like TypeScript. You want to use an event of a type. Right. And so what you usually end up doing is you, you build your own event that extends an event. That looks all fine to me. So you, yep. you same arguments. You, now you can just put stuff, whatever you want, on the event in a dictionary and grab the things that you want. And now you can you know, dispatch that event like any normal event. Yep. Great. Turns out, though, that in Edge and iOS Safari, actually, yep. it's, all, it's Safari, all Safari. All Safari this time, yep. not just iOS. And Edge. Um, yep. This extends event turns out to not actually be inheriting from events. It doesn't, does it? No. Yeah. And so in Squoosh, we had a very simple fix. We basically just fixed it. After we have an instance created with new, we just threw it into another function that just fixed the prototype. Fixed, yes. Just say, this is your prototype. Yeah. This is You are actually an yeah. event. Yeah, swap that over. This bug, the, the behavior, it comes from a very weird feature of JavaScript where a a constructor can return a value. Right. Well, don't say right like that's normal. Right, question mark, dot, dot, dot. OK, thank you. <laughs> um, well, like a constructor function, so you can return like four. Uh, yes, <laughs> or another <laughs> object or something. And so when you do new thing, you actually get a completely different object back. Yeah. And JavaScript is like, <laughs> why not? Why not? Do oh. what you want. And we think that's what the implementations in Edge and Safari right. are doing internally. Okay. So that's my theory, anyway. Well, so we used our own events in Prox as well. Yes. And so I just ripped this out of Squoosh, put it in Prox, and it still didn't work. What? Because it turns out that in Prox, we're compiling to ES5. Oh. Because we're targeting Firefox 48 and older browsers. And so we needed ES5. And the way that both TypeScript and also Babel, I guess, transpile classes to functions with prototypes isn't quite compatible with how the browsers expect the, uh, the new event constructor to work. So oh. it literally just panics at construction. 
I so what see. we did instead in, in procs is we just wrote our own factory function. State change event factory, brilliant. So All, instead yeah. of saying creating a proper state change event function or class, we just wrote a function that creates a new event and then changes the prototype. Right. So we went from doing this horrible hack for just Edge and Safari to doing it for everyone. Right. Well, fine. I mean, it still oh, works, right. but it's yes. just a function that exists, and it wasn't necessary because <laughs> ES5. There's, I think that's the, it's on the developer coat of arms, isn't it? <laughs> but it works. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Fine. Pretty much. I, I, was, uh, I tried, I think, for an hour to somehow actually have a proper ES5 constructor function mm. that is a proper event. I couldn't get it to work. I just uh, couldn't yeah. get it to work. And so I was like, oh, you know what? Factory function. Just one place where it's used. I just only have one custom event, I think. Mm -hmm. Don't care enough. Job done. Right. Fine. Okay. And for the grand finale, <laughs> we have the Heidi address bar. The Heidi address bar. Excellent. OK. Um, everybody probably knows that if you are on like a blog website with your mobile browser and you scroll down, the address bar hides. Heidi. Yeah, Heidi it's Heidi. Address. And if yep. you scroll back up, it comes back into view. Come backy. The problem with that is that Different browsers seem to be behaving differently what 100% height or 100VH means oh. in this context. Yes. Some browsers seem to say, think the address bar is an overlay. Some don't. Sometimes mm. only the VH. For VH, it's not an overlay, but for the percent, it is. And then there is web views, which, again, behave differently on both Android and iOS. And we ran into this with our game because we wanted to use natural scrolling. So our game field is actually the actual site content, and the bars are just fixed position. And so you was using normal browser scrolling. So that means if you scroll down, the address bar was high, everything would rejiggle and jank, and that was stupid. And yeah. you scroll back up, everything came back into view. And so we thought, you know what? We're going to disable the highly address bar. So I, the, the differences across browsers at this point, I think um, iOS and Chrome have made a conscious decision to try and do the same thing as each other. <laughs> but iOS and Chrome both do different things in, in with different bits of CSS. So I mean, ah, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head. Like it's it's 100 vh means a particular thing, unless the element is position fixed, in which case it means a different thing. And that's is position fixed changes the rules, and that's kind of what we were seeing because we had a, a bottom bar that was position fixed, and that was kind of like. Oh, it was jumping around. Jumping right. around. Um, Either way, it was annoying. It was annoying, yeah. And so we thought the easiest way to fix this is just to do scrolling on an element. Yeah, we abandoned the, the full page natural so scrolling So we did. Thing. We used our main element, which is what the game, where the game field was in, or yep. where our entire UI was in, basically. Just position it up loot, made it the size of the screen, overflow auto, boom, yeah. scrolling. I know. I hate this. <laughs> I hate that it's 2019 and we still have to do a special thing to make scrolling work properly. But it's the web. Okay. It's, it's homely. Right. Yes. <laughs> and um, so this. But, ooh, this is this is a bit new, isn't it? Like I didn't know much about this until we did it. Yeah. This is basically saving the over scroll. Yes. The thing where when you scroll, you're at the top and try to scroll further top. Bends it down a little bit or snaps back a into view, or something. which in this case yeah. we didn't want. So uh, yeah. we set contain. Yes, but it's more about you know it's a f it's a screen filling element that can scroll, and it fixed it for in iOS Safari I think. Mm -hmm. But Chrome, the odd browser, oh, was like, you know what? This looks like you're trying. I'd forgotten about this. I I blocked this out. <laughs> Chrome was like, I think you're trying to do a page scroller. So I'm going to give you our great Heidi address bar behavior for free. It did. Oh, of course it did. I really had blocked this out. You've <laughs> gone through all the commits and probably just gone for <laughs> well, I remembered this. You actually yeah, remembered this? This is the first one I put in. Oh, brilliant. OK. And yeah. if you remember our fix, you know how great it is. Yes, I do. We looked at this line yep, and did. we said, we can spare a pixel. There we go. <laughs> This, so this was clearly Chrome trying to be helpful, trying, trying to do the to right thing. And failing. <laughs> it, it made was. us so angry. Yes. Because we still got the address bar Heidi janky jumpy thing, and we didn't want it at all. Yes. It's like, we, we're doing this so you don't So there must do that. be a heuristic somewhere in our code that says, if you're a position absolute that fills the entire screen, then do it. the address Heidi bar attached to this scroller, you know, the root scroller. Yes. And so we added a pixel. We added so a pixel, and that was enough. 
Oh my. Oh, I, I like uh, it. There's still, still PTSD going on here from, am, from the weird, weird workarounds that we have encountered. Yes. During. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that. We should file a bug for that, because or, or we we should have a way to avoid that. So that's four stupid hacks to fix four different brow. Is it four browsers? It's two, three, three browsers, and yeah, <sighs> it's really just web developer life. This is, I feel like, what if you're trying to get something out in time, you have to make these stupid shortcuts. You've got the correct path, but you have the fast path. The road's out. <laughs> you got them. Yep. That's web development. That blah. bottom one pixel. That's what that is. Yes. That was stupid. That's right. what. That's what I'm saying. That, that's a good ending for for this episode. <laughs> stupid. Four stupid things. <laughs> by four stupid browsers. Actually, we're only sort of blaming two browsers, isn't it? <laughs>